Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShock.com and ElectronicLessons.com. Uh, on our electronic learning board, these blocks have to be discussed. Uh, I've designed the electronics learning board uh, <coughs> to use all four of these using one sh small block, easily configurable. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to talk about a transistor driver, and we're going to talk about each and every one of these blocks. Relays, DC motors, active buzzers, and speakers. And we're going to talk about how we can use a transistor to drive them. First of all, let's talk about a relay. Okay, here's our relay, pin 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. This is our physical package, where the relay looks like underneath. Five pins, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's a five, standard 5-volt five relay, single pole, double throw. Um, I'm going to talk about that more in a minute. I'm just going to talk a bit more about the components here. This is a 2N2222 NPM transistor. Collector, base emitter. This is the physical package. Collector, base emitter. There's a curved side of the transistor and a flat side with writing on it, and so that's that's how, how it looks like physically. This is a 1K ohm protective resistor, and this we're going to use this transistor as a switch. When power is applied to the base of this protective 1K ohm resistor, the whatever's at the, the whatever um, is, is at the collector flows through the transistor to the emitter, base collector emitter. So, uh, in the case where no power is applied to this NPN transistor. The current can't flow from C to E, but when power is applied to the base, um, power co current at the collector can flow through to the emitter. So we'll get that back to that in a second. What we have here is VCC. That's five volts. That's a power supply line. This is a five volt relay, and this is pins one, pin one, pins one or two is essentially a coil of wire inside. And when it become when the power is applied to it, it becomes magnetized, and that controls three internal pins. Uh, when when the circuit is off, when there's when the magnetic field is not there, the common pin CO is connected to the NC pin, normally closed. And when the relay becomes uh, energized, um, it ba this electromagnet basically causes the common pin to switch from the normally connected, normally closed pin to the normally open pin. And when it's de-energized, it goes back to the normally connected pin. It's a high power electromagnetic switch. Relays are fantastic. I love relays. We're going to use this on the electronics learning board to turn on lamps and stuff using claps or using vibration. We're going to have a lot of fun with that. Anyhow, getting back to it. So, this is our switch. When we put a 5 volt signal, if, if, if our, our VCC is 5 volts, when we place a 5 volt signal on the 1K ohm resistor, protective resistor here, it activates the base of the transistor, meaning that power will flow through the coil of wire, energizing, energizing the field, through the collector to the emitter, which is connected to ground. So it's a, it's a series circuit. Anyhow, so that's what happens. That energizes the coil, pins one and two. Now, the diode. This diode is very important. What happens is when a relay is, at, is, is uh, deactivated, the, uh, when the circuit is closed, the magnetic field collapses and that causes a, a voltage spike and that can affect anything on your VCC line and it can also damage your transistor. So we have to use a transistor shunt or sorry a diode shunt to protect the voltage line and the transistor from it. <coughs> when the uh, diode, this is the cathode or the negative of the diode, is connected to your VCC line and the positive, the anode, is connected to this collector of your uh, transistor, it shunts that voltage and protects protects the whole system from that voltage spike. Considering it, consider it absorption. Anyhow, so this transistor is going to be common in all of our circuits. It's going to be our driver because we're going to use all sorts of different things to drive whichever uh, actuator or buzzer or whatever we choose to use. So let's talk about a DC motor. Okay, let's interchange our relay for a DC motor. Now. What you can do is if you connect the positive to the VCC, negative to the... There's not really a positive or negative, but what you can do is you can reverse them to have the motor turn different ways. Anyhow, on the electronics learning board, there's a terminal block that allows for you to plug in a DC motor. Now, it also will come with a DC motor. So, if we, uh, as you can see, everything stays the same. The DC motor is, is, is more or less... Uh, it, has uh, electromagnetic properties as well because it's a, it really is kind of just a coil of wire. So we want to have that diode. That diode is still necessary. We do employ it. It's working on the exact same circuit. And so when power is applied to the base of the transistor, 
power will throw, flow through the DC motor, through the collector of the transistor, through the emitter to ground. Completing the circuit, the motor will spin clockwise. However, if we, uh, if we reverse it, it will spin counterclockwise. So that's kind of a neat thing about, about little DC motors. DC, little DC motors can be found on eBay. They can be found uh, in a lot of, of, uh, of, of just standard appliances. You can, you'll find them if you're, if you're a tinker. You've surely come across tons of them while taking stuff apart. Very easy to drive them. We're going to use the exact same circuit. Let's talk about the DC buzzer. The piezo buzzer. I wouldn't say this diode is necessary, but all of these different options are selectable by by a jumper. So they're all on the board and they share that diode. That diode is not really necessary for the piezo buzzer. The piezo buzzer that we'll be using requires five volts. There's an internal oscillator that, once powered, creates a high pitched squeal. Um, and again, I'll be showing you that at the end of this video. So uh, there's two leads on the piezo buzzer. Uh, the longer lead is positive, shorter lead is negative. Our, short, our positive lead is connected to 5 volts, a shorter lead to the collector of the transistor. When power is applied to the base of the transistor, power flows through the piezo buzzer, activating it through to ground, through the transistor, and it creates a high pitch squeal. So, very easy. It's a simple circuit. It's at applying VCC. There's no current limitation required. Uh, the internal oscillator uh, activates the internal little piezo plate, and is, that's how it creates it. Uh, a lot of piezo buzzers, you need to actually create that frequency through a an oscillator. We could potentially do that if we had what's called a, pa a passive piezo buzzer, and we would create that frequency with our 555 timer that's on the board. Uh, we'd have we have a, a tutorial for that, so make sure to watch it. However, the nice thing about this one is it's all it's got all of the uh, required circuitry, oscillator circuitry inside. So we will be testing that out in just a few minutes. Lastly, let's talk about a speaker. Okay, we put an 8 ohm speaker along the same lines. Now we don't want to turn this on. What we want to do is, this is actually quite a Mickey Mouse way of doing things, but it was an, uh, an additional add-on that I, 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 uh, I'll be basically giving with the electronics learning board. We can plug in a speaker. This is a way to drive a speaker. It's not my preferable way to do it, but you can do it just the same. So you want to put an audio signal on this line that has a decent amplitude, not just a couple of millivolts, you want to have a decent amplitude, and think of it as a sine wave. If you place that audio signal on the base of the transistor, the transistor will essentially turn on a little, you know, it'll turn on with the, the signal. It's a little bit harder to explain. Consider, consider it an amplifier. It's not just turning on and off, it's turning on a little bit and a lot, it, and it basically turns on about as much as you're actually sending on the base of the transistor, if that makes sense. So if you send an audio signal on the the on the uh, <clears throat> the base you can you can you can basically turn that into the uh, into the audio sound through the 8 ohm speaker and again this is just it's, it is a coil of wire it has electromagnetic properties so you want to have that diode in there it, it's a uh, I think it's a 0.5 watt speaker that will be included with the kit so you can get some well, some neat this is, you can get some neat results out of this and I will be uh, I will be adding, uh, giving, giving out a, uh, a, uh, an iPod jack peripheral so that you can actually play with this. So you can plug in your iPod and you will be able to use an audio amplifier on the board. So that's that. Now let's hook them up on the, uh, let's hook them up on the electronics learning board. If you haven't already seen our monostable multivibrator uh, tutorial, are based on our 555 timer, I highly suggest that you do it. Uh, ignore this wire for now, but look at this LED. What I'm actually doing is I'm taking the 555 timer output and putting it on my LED for test, just using one wire. So I press this button, and the LED goes on for some time based on how I've calibrated my my uh, my delay on my monostable multivibrator. So I can lessen it, or I can make it longer. As you can see, it's not on for nearly as long now. So that's when when the LEDs light up, and imagine that is five volts. This is a key. This is a key block 
for our device. So now what we're going to do is we're going to basically connect that pulse. We're going to connect that pulse from the LED to the base of the transistor. Now again, all of those devices that I talked about before share the same circuit, now, but it's there's using using a little jumper right here. You can switch between the relay, the buzzer, or the motor, and the motor is actually on this two-pin terminal block. There's one can is connected. One side is connected to five volts, and the other side is connected to the collector of the, uh, or sorry, to to um the, to the collector of the emitter, or collector of the transistor. Uh, this, by the way, is your uh, terminal block output for your five volt relay. There's the CO pin the NC pin and the NO pin as we talked about. Uh, you may not be able to see it from there. Anyhow, I'm going to get straight to it. All I have to do to activate, say, my buzzer is tie my DLY output for delay to the actuator pin. And right now, I've got the relay connected. Now, you're not going to be able to see much with the relay, but you'll be able to hear the click. So let's try it. Do you hear that clicking off? That means that as long as the LED would have been lit up, we're not connected to the LED anymore. So that high-powered switch is on for a short period of time. Now, trust me, this relay will be the key in many of our projects. So what happens if I take off the jumper and I connect it to Buzz? So now I've, dis I've disabled the relay and I've basically applied the buzzer. I can make that long that buzz longer if I'd like by putting a longer pulse on the tra on the transistor base. Sorry, shorter, shorter that time. If I want to make it longer, I turn the potentiometer right. Anyway, there you go. So now what I can do is I can take a motor and I can place it in the two-pin terminal block here, uh, five volts and DRV for drive. What comes with the board is a little phone vibrator motor. Cool, huh? Now I can shorten the delay, or I can lengthen it. Pretty neat. Um, not much to it, though. Very simple to do. We can condition the circuit in many different ways because this board is fully customizable. Um, I'll quickly do a, I'll do a very quick demonstration of a speaker, um, and then we'll end the video. And that'll just leave us, I believe, one or two more videos until all of the blocks have been covered. And I'm not going to get into this project uh, because this is actually one of the projects, an audio amplifier. But I've got my iPod plugged into the board. I've got my speaker connected to the uh, base uh, to, to five volts and to the bait or to the collector of the trans uh, transistor so there's a little audio amplifier using a little transistor and an op amp so give me three steps Leonard Skinner I'm going to turn this off just so I can talk about it a little bit more. So that's it. Those are our actuators selected by this little jumper here labeled uh, RLY Relay, Buzz for Buzzer, and MTR for Motor. In the case where I'm using a speaker, I'm just connecting it to the lower rail here. And when you see the schematic, if you buy the board, you'll understand how the, 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 uh, the rail works and how it selects between all of the actuators. Um, and between 5 volts and the base of the, the collector of the transistor, the 2 and 2, 2, 2, 2. Anyhow, I hope you found this, uh, this video useful. Uh, next, we'll be talking about the sensors, the IR sensor, the vibration sensor, the uh, LDR, light dependent resistor, and the microphone. As well, we'll have an external plug-in, some external plug-ins that'll come with the board, such as a reed switch and a, uh, a PIR sensor. So stay tuned for that video.